Hello, Internet. My name is Stephen Tammen, and today I want to go over updating the build image for sites on Netlify. So a couple weeks back, the Netlify support people posted a thread uh, introducing the topic of updating the build image from, I believe it's 14.04 to 20.04. So that's trusty to focal. And uh, the thread's been up a couple weeks and there were some issues for some of us in updating, um, specifically regarding a, a Ruby version. Um, so I'm coming to do the final update for myself here. And one of the guys on the thread just asked, or not asked, said he was a little bit lost. And so I figured while I'm doing this, I may as well just record it. Um, so I'm just gonna go bottom to top on uh, basically where you go on the Netlify dashboard and what the things you should do and what the order is. So hopefully this will help, uh, you know, and anyone else who maybe hasn't done this before or, you know, hasn't had to deal with the settings, you know, it, it is probably a bit confusing. I mean, I certainly was confused the first time I did it. So when you start on your Netlify dashboard like this, let um, me see, I have two sites on Netlify right now. Um, you can click on the site that you have. And then on this page, there will be a list of deploys. So these are the builds of your site um, in order at the top is the most recent one. And as you scroll down, you get less recent ones. So what you wanna do is click on this header here called production deploys. Now, since we are going to be changing the build version, you probably don't want it to go live on your site immediately. So the first thing you should do is click this button here called stop auto, stop auto publishing. And what that will do is it will lock your production deploy to the last one that was successful. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for this site. And now you should see that there's a lock next to the published here. Um, so now what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go ahead and bump the build image. So you're gonna click on the button that I just clicked on there. Um, so on the deploys page for this and how we got here from my dashboard was um, I clicked on the site and then I went and clicked on production deploys and then I clicked on deploy settings from here. So once you're on this page, you're going to have to scroll down until you find a section that says build image selection. And so right now you see that I'm running Ubuntu trusty 14.04. So this is the old build image and I'm going to want to update this to the newest one. Now the latest stable one is 16.04, but if we're doing it, I kind of figure we may as well do it for the new one. So we're gonna go ahead and select that here, and then we're gonna press save. Now, before we trigger a build, I'm going to go ahead and relink the repository that my site is being built from, because one of the guys helping us debug in the thread had decided that some of the package dependencies that we were having issues with were getting linked from the first time that you link the repository to Netlify. So some dependencies got set, and it's not perhaps the greatest documentation because nowhere are you seeing where these versions are. But he said that the way that you fix this is to go to the build in the build and deploy section, go to the one that says build settings. So we're on the same page, the one that we scrolled down on. Now that we've picked focal, so 20.04 is the build image, we're going to go up to the build settings section here. Now you can see the GitHub repository that I'm deploying my site from is this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go get rid of it and then I'm gonna link it again. So I'm gonna press edit settings and say link to a different repository. Now I'm gonna authenticate with GitHub because my Git repository is on GitHub. So once we've authenticated via the API here, um, I'm going to go ahead and select that same repository again. So I have, quite a few repositories as you can see, but we're going to search just for the, well, okay, that's not helpful. <laughs> we're gonna search for this one, the one that I'm deploying my site from and going to be deploying the master branch. And we're not gonna change anything different here. These are all the things that I had before, the public directory. And so I have just relinked the build repository for the site. And so when we do that, it will take us back to the deploy page here. 
and we just relinked it uh, and we have updated the build image. All right, well, I paused for a second there to let it finish. And if I go ahead and click on the newest build, so if you remember, we went ahead and locked our builds. So we have the last published one is still up. And now you'll notice that there's one deployment ahead of this. So this is what we did after we relinked the repository. It went ahead and rebuilt the site. So if we go look at this now, and we look at the, the log, the deploy log here, you'll see that it said that the build was successful. Um, and this is a good thing because I am not specifying any versions. So previously when I updated from the trusty build image to the focal build image, I was getting an error because it was having problems installing an old version of Ruby. But now that we've re-linked the repository, it is picking up the dependencies just fine from the focal build image, so the defaults there, and is building the site that way. And in fact, because it's not trying to install an old dependency version, I believe it was Ruby 2.3 it was installing, it actually builds a lot faster because it's using the default versions of, you can see Python here, Node, Ruby, PHP. You know, I'm building my static site with the Hugo static site generator, but all of the dependencies aren't taking up build time now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and do exactly the same thing for the other site that I run. Um, so just going ahead and reviewing what we do. So you go from your dashboard to the site and then you click on production deploys and then you stop auto publishing just in case you break something while you're trying to update. And you go to deploy settings and you scroll down until you find build image and then you update the build image you to whichever one you want, one of the newer ones. I'm going to be doing the most updated one, so focal. And then we go ahead and relink the repository again. So you can see this one's a, a different Git repository, but the same process as we did last time. So again, I'm going to authenticate with GitHub because that's where I have my repository. And once we've authenticated, I'm going to go down and relink exactly the same repository that we had before. Oops, well, I guess it was on the first page. All right, so here it is, here's the repository and all the builds gonna stay the same as it was. So again, I'm using Hugo as my static site generator, but some of this might be different for you if you're using a different one. And so once we press this deploy site button, you're gonna see that it's going to go ahead and start a build here. So I'm gonna pause again and we'll wait for this one to finish too. And then I'll make some closing comments. All right, so now my second site here has built. And if we go look at this deploy summary in the log, you'll see that we had exactly the same sort of setup as on my other site. So all the green checks and all of the dependencies installed. And so that means that I've now updated both of my sites to be using the new build image. Now, the last thing that we wanna do, and this is important, so you don't wanna forget it, is to start auto-publishing again. So next time you push a commit to the linked repository, that means that Netlify will run its continuous integration to go ahead and build your site automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and start it again on this site. So now that we've successfully published, you'll see that the lock went away. That means that next time something gets pushed to the branch, the site will rebuild. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that on my other site as well. So I'm gonna click on production deploys and then start auto publishing. All right, so one last thing I wanna talk about in this video and that is the netlify.toml file that specifies the build settings here. So you can see that I am on the GitHub repository for one of the sites that I just bumped the build image for. And I just wanted to give folks an idea if they already didn't know about what this sort of thing looks like. So you'll recognize these things from when I was linking the repository. Um, these are the defaults, I believe, for Hugo. So this is the directory that we're publishing the site out of. And this is the command that's going to get run on Netlify server. Um, and you can see here, I'm actually running a pretty out of date version of Hugo because my theme has some uh, code that has been deprecated in later versions, but 
uh, really what I wanted to show here was that if you have a specific version of say Ruby or PHP or some other language that your site relies on, you can actually set the version right here in the environment section. Um, and so before I just came and updated the site to build by relinking, I was actually specifying a Ruby version right here to get it to build because there was a problem with an earlier Ruby version on the most recent build image. So I was just gonna say that if you do need to specify a version, rather than letting the environment pick it when you relink the repository, this file right here is where you do it.